Hi, um, I'm Molly from Oztrek. I'm here with Bree Nickel of Deakin School of Medicine. She's a student at Deakin um, and she's going to chat with you about making the most of your MMI. Awesome. Thank you so much, Molly. Really appreciate it. Um, hi, everyone. Um, like she said, my name's Bree. I'm a second year medical student here at Deakin. Um, I also have the pleasure of working with Med Mentors, which is a national organization that helps undergrad students um, apply for medicine and go through uh, kind of the application process, as well as mostly help with our um, mock MMIs. Um, that's our biggest event that we run in the year. So I hope that I can help give you some tips and tricks on how to answer questions. I think if we first start off, um, what the MMI structure is for internationals at Deakin specifically, um, every school runs it a little bit differently. What Deakin does is it's usually one or two people. Um, they ask you a series of questions. It's a little bit more conversational than your traditional MMI, but the questions are really geared towards different pillars that the um, university is looking for in their applicants. Remember, every single school is looking for something different. Um, so just because one school might not be looking for that doesn't mean another one isn't if you feel like you fit that a little bit better. In terms of the questions, typically you're going to get a prompt. You'll read it for two minutes and then you'll have anywhere from five to seven minutes to chat about it. That might just be you singly chatting to them um, and they might not give you any feedback or that might be kind of a dialogue between. They might ask you a few prompting questions just to kind of get yourself thinking. So I think when you first start, you have to think about, you know, when you read the question, what are you going to do? So I always found it best to read the question and really just almost repeat it in my brain, um, because as soon as you go into the room or as soon as you um, get into your Zoom room, you might not be able to see the prompt again. Some places do let you write down little notes, so that's really helpful as well if you can um, double check that before you would have your MMI. Next one you want to do is really analyze what is it asking you? Is it asking you to present your opinion? Is it asking you about um, a specific topic in the news? Um, is it telling, trying to get you to bring a personal example? Um, and I'm always a big fan of you can bring a relevant personal example. Um, definitely bring that because this is the only opportunity that they have to really get to know you as a student. Typically, if you've made it to the MMI rounds, they know that you're a great student academically. They just wanna see what you are um, kind of in the flesh and get to know you a bit better. Uh, specifically, Deacon, they love to get to know their students. Um, really, most programs do, um, particularly for internationals. So definitely take the advantage of the time that you have um, to give it kind of the best foot for you and to kind of show who you are. Next, when you enter the room, there are a couple tactics that people like to take. Um, med mentors and myself, we tend to kind of say, um, you might want to talk about three things. Say, I've noticed this, this, and this. I'd like to talk about, start with this and kind of go into it. So if you wanted to talk about, if it was a question about Indigenous health, you might talk about one, I want to talk about access. Two, I want to talk about cultural uh, sensitivity. And three, I want to talk about um, including them in the care that they receive. So first, my first one. Um, talking about access, and then I would go on to talk about how the access affects them or doesn't. What some students find in other resources that they use is people tell them to repeat back the prompt. So particularly now on our Zoom platforms, um, they've actually cut the time for MMI. So we used to get you know, anywhere up to nine minutes on some stations, depending on what university. And now they're really hovering around that five to six mark. So by coming in and saying from the, you know, from the prompt, I read that Sally, my friend is struggling to um, get over a breakup and she's come to me and et cetera, et cetera. As the person who is assessing you, I have read the prompt. I know what the prompt says. Sometimes that might be helpful for you to gather your thoughts, but most times you end up just kind of wasting your time a little bit when you could really be putting in a bit more of your personality in, into it and to let us get to know you better. The second thing I always like to do is, again, add a personal thing if you can. So if something similar has happened to you or if it reminds you about something in the news that you're really passionate about or if there's something that you can speak of or um, something like that, that, again, really helps get us to, to get to know you. Um, although don't make anything up. If it didn't happen to you, don't, don't make it up. Um, they definitely don't want that. Um, next, when you start to chat, it can be a little bit hard because sometimes people are a bit um, stone-faced. And so that can be really hard to kind of get that 
feeling of, you know, am I doing well? Am I not doing well? So the best way I can say is practice in front of people. Um, do as many as you can. Get your friends to be absolutely stone-faced, like nothing, um, so that you're not looking off of your interviewer to see if you're doing well or not doing well, because that can be really tough. Um, definitely get in as much practice as you can beforehand and really try to look at the different breadths of question types there are out there. So there's some universities are looking specifically, you know, clinical research based. Some are looking for more um, community like GP led. Um, so really like look what's in the news, read the newspaper, um, specifically if you're looking for as an international student um, coming to Australia. Definitely see if you can just search up a few Australian relevant literature pieces. So here we've got a big focus on indigenous health. Um, we've got a big focus on so coal mining industry is a big thing here. So in one of my interviews, we had touched on that. Um, I was pretty lucky that I'm in environmental sector. So although I wasn't familiar with Australia, I'm pretty familiar with in Canada. Um, so definitely just try to really read the news, immerse yourself and research the schools beforehand. So see what their pillars are, see what they're looking for in their applicants. Look on social media, you're gonna find tons of students that are at each of the universities. Even Austrac has their amazing ambassadors. So see what kind of person they are, ask questions to them. Um, they'll be able to kind of guide you a little bit more in each particular um, domain of that university and, um, and kind of see what they like in their applicants, as well as showing you what the program is. Um, think of this like a job interview, you know, you wouldn't go into a job interview, not having prepared, um, not understanding what company you're applying for and what their values and beliefs are and not kind of knowing what your role is. The other thing, um, piece of advice is when you kind of have a scenario where you maybe have to pick one over the other. So what they generally want to see is that you can reason both sides. So, you know, asking, say, um, if someone tells you something in secret, but maybe you feel like this could be a harm to them. So you feel like maybe you have to breach that confidentiality. So explain, you know, what it would mean why you wanna be confidential with your friend. Explain why it's important to your friendship and how you're, you know, you wanna build that trust. But on the same token, maybe you wanna talk about how, you know, you're worried about them and maybe they could be, you know, potentially progressing to harm in some way. And that would actually be more detrimental than maintaining that confidentiality. So kind of show both sides. But then here's the, the final one is you got to pick a side. So you never want to be just known as that fence sitter. You want to be able to pick a side and reason it through. Um, this really shows your train of thought. And honestly, in every single MMI question, there is seriously no right answer. They purposely make the questions the way that they do. They purposely make them a little bit polarizing because they want to see how you think through it, how you reason through it, and if you can pick a side. The more you can reason through it, the more you can share your train of thought, the better that is for your examiners. Um, so again, they can really get to know you. Lastly, um, I guess would say, I would say is just have a bit of fun with it. You know, this is a new experience. It's going to be hard. Um, I know myself, like I just try, you know, try to smile through it, do your best. Um, sometimes you may think that you bombed a complete question. You didn't. I'm sure you didn't. Um, and they always know that, you know, you're not going to excel at every single question. That's why they give you multiple questions. If they thought you could excel at every single one, they would, you know, just ask us one and be one and done. Um, but they want to see who you are. They want to see how you can kind of come ad hoc and answer things. Um, and they just want you to be yourself. So definitely kind of go ahead with that. Um, in terms of how you're going to prep for it and what each scenario is like, so some are going to be the traditional MMI style that you may have known in the schools of um, the countries that you're from, potentially. So um, that traditional where you move from room to room, you have an examiner, you get two minutes of read time, five minutes of speak time, and then you kind of move on. Um, like Deacons tends to be a bit more personal, so they've got more of a panel style, so one or two interviewers with you, and then some universities do a straight panel, so there might be like four or five of them, and then just you, which can be a bit intimidating, um, but you're definitely going to do well. Um, like I said, just make sure you practice, practice with people, try a whole bunch of different questions. Um, if you're really, you know, bad at your ethics, maybe focus on ethics. If you feel like you've got a handle on ethics, but maybe you don't know about um, some of the 
um, public health measures maybe that are going on, maybe focus on that. There are tons of free resources out there. So don't worry about um, feeling like you have to pay for things. I know there are some services that offer um, assistance. Those can be great if you can afford them, but also know there's tons of free systems out there. Um, do a small plug for med mentors. We've got our Instagram and our um, YouTube. You can go out there. They've got tons of different tips and tricks from multiple med students. Um, they are mostly domestic people, but honestly, for Deacon at least, they pretty much use the exact same questions that we get as internationals, um, as uh, domestic students get. Um, the other thing that really helps if you feel like you maybe can't practice with someone or you're not really ready to is sit in front of this computer, turn on record and just talk to the computer. Um, it can feel weird. I personally just had to do that for an assignment and I counted the number of times that I said, um, and it was like over 50 times. So, um, and there it comes again. So just try it. Uh, you can get a chance to see, watch yourself back, see where maybe you could have improved or um, where you feel like you could have maybe added a bit more um, and go from there. Um, because then you can kind of come back and you can see your progress through the the times of the videos. So if you do a couple of them, you can see that you did really well in this one. You were great at explaining. You were able to pick a side and go from there. Um, okay, so we've got the Instagram account. So it's at Med Mentors AU. Um, I can definitely share it with Molly. Um, and then on YouTube as well. So we've got tons of resources and they're for everyone. They're not specific, always just for um, Australia. You can really use them for most people. Um, I might be able to take some questions if anyone has any. Yeah, we've got a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions they want to put in the chat? Okay, well, we can probably end it here. If you do have any questions, feel free to head back to Career Echo. Thank you so much, Bree. We really appreciate you coming. Um, that was awesome. And hopefully uh, there's good takeaway there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.